In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. At the top of a hill a few miles from Jerusalem, there is a cave. It is located at the top of this incline, this little city called Bethlehem. This cave was known to the shepherds. It was a place where they would stable their sheep. It's a large cave. And there it was, the Almighty God chose to leap down from heaven. The shepherds who were keeping watch were the shepherds who kept watch over the sheep that were destined for the temple. These shepherds then were given a sign. You shall find the child wrapped in swaddling clothes. And this shall be a sign unto you. Why was this a particular sign to the shepherds? That they would find this child wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. The shepherds had a custom because they kept the sheep that were destined for temple sacrifice they had a custom in which they would preserve those firstborn, unblemished male lambs that were born and therefore would be destined for temple sacrifice. In order to keep them from being damaged by the rest of the herd, their limbs from being broken, their wool from being soiled, they would take that newborn male lamb. They would wrap it in swaddling clothes and they would lay it in the manger. Therefore, it would be out of reach from the other sheep. It wouldn't be trampled upon. It would be preserved. So when the shepherds were told this sign, and they came, and instead of seeing what they were used to seeing in that stable, for they had used that stable before, instead of seeing a lamb, they saw a child wrapped in swaddling clothes, and laid in the manger, where they had placed other lambs that had been destined for temple sacrifice. This then was truly a sign to them. It was a sign of who this child is and what he was destined for. Our blessed Lord took on human flesh that he might be able to sacrifice it for us, for our sins. This is why our Lord chose that title of Lamb of God. The Jews knew what you do with lambs. They were offered to God. They were offered in sacrifice. But there was something further. I mentioned this last night. So the choir, the altar boys are going to hear the same thing. There was a custom with the high priests the high priests, after they would retire their vestments, that is, after they were soiled with the blood of the lambs that they would offer, they would take those vestments, and cut them into bands, and they would use these vestments to wrap the Torah, the law of Moses, the word of God in the Old Testament. But then there is a particular garment of the high priest, similar to the white alb the priest wears. It was worn under the outer vestments of the priest. And during the Feast of Sukkot, which is the Feast of Tabernacles, the final feast of the year, when that priestly garment was taken out of service, that simple linen tunic would be laid upon the altar and then after this, this old garment would be either cut up and used as the wicks for the candles of the temple, or it would be given to the poor. Now we know that Our Lady and St. Joseph were poor. We know this from the Feast of the Presentation of Our Blessed Lord, because they presented the offering of the poor to doves instead of a lamb because they could not afford the lamb. 
so they were poor. And there is a tradition that is upheld to this day in Bethlehem that St. Joseph and Our Lady had been given one of these garments of the high priest. And it was this cloth from this garment that Our Lady used to wrap our blessed Lord in the swaddling clothes and lay him in the manger. So there was this little child whom the shepherds saw, wrapped in the garments of a high priest, garments already spattered with the blood of lambs that had gone before him. And there he was, laying, prepared for his own sacrifice, which would come. The same priestly cloths that were used to wrap the Torah, the Word of God, in the Old Covenant, are now used to wrap the Word made flesh in the New Covenant. All these things were great signs that God knew exactly what he was doing in foreshadowing every bit of these customs, every one of these signs. And so today, God knows exactly what he is doing. We're in a time of great uncertainty, time of great fear, depending on who you speak to. But you know, God knows exactly what he is doing. There was great joy in the hearts of those shepherds, even though they had to sit through that watch in the cold night. They had a difficult job. So there should be great joy in our hearts, too, because we receive the same announcement. We receive the same announcement that the Word has been made flesh. He dwells among us. He has come to take on a human body so that he might sacrifice it for us. This is a great sign of hope. And just as those shepherds had to go back to their watches after they saw our blessed Lord, they had to go back to take care of those sheep in the cold of the night. It's not like the night got any warmer after that. They returned to their flocks with new hope because they had seen the light of the world at midnight. Our world today is at midnight. But we also can see the light of the world. God, as he calls us to Holy Mass this morning, calls us to come to the manger and see the Word made flesh laid in the manger, wrapped in his priestly vestments, prepared to make sacrifice, prepared to make all new. And so we can go back to our watches. We can go back to our duties. We can go back and tend the flocks that we are responsible for with new hope, with new joy, because the Word has entered into this world. The light has entered into this world. We should never be demoralized. We should never be discouraged because our Lord has come to us. He made it a point to come at midnight he who is the light of the world, he made it a point to come at midnight. Just like he made it a point of bringing his apostles to Caesarea Philippi, where there was an active pagan temple at the time, to challenge them and say, who do you say that I am? And there in the presence of an active pagan temple where human sacrifice was even done at that temple, that's where he asked the apostles that question, who do you say that I am? And so we can be in the midst of a winter, we can be in the midst of darkness, we can be in the middle of the midnight of the world. And God asks us the same question, who do you say that I am? Do you trust that the light of the world has come into the world, even though it be midnight? The shepherds could reply yes, because they saw the signs we also should be able to reply, yes. We believe that the light of the world has come. He will come once again. And most importantly, we need to prepare the manger of our own heart for him. With our own sacrifices, our own detachment, we need to, as it were, cut up the cloths to prepare our blessed Lord to be wrapped in them in the manger of our heart. The world may not be wanting to receive the light, but we can receive the light. The inn may have no room for our blessed Lord, but we can make room for our blessed Lord. 
So we should not be demoralized, we should be filled with joy. Don't be discouraged by what you see in the world. That may be a bold statement. Don't be discouraged by it, because God is the victor. That was a pretty discouraging beginning, wasn't it? A stable, a manger. That seems pretty bleak beginning. But no, we know our Lord had the great victory. And so, as bleak as things may see in the world, we know God will have the victory. So stay confident in, Al in Almighty God. Invite our blessed Lord into your heart. Come back to him if you've been away for a while. Know what it is to experience the mercy of Almighty God as he absolves you from your sins. Come back to our Lord. Come to the stable. Invite the Lamb of God to rest on your heart. Invite the light of the world into your soul. May God grant each one of you a very blessed Christmas, a very joyful Christmas season. God bless you. May our Lady of the Rosary pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.